This is Hoof, which means fear. Never forget your mother woke you that morning. You ran to the TV. She said explosions, a tower collapsing into itself, a structure of sand, aware where you stood, how flags can flash like hammers, fabric and colors can beg. Never forget learning you were Arab. The first time letters collapsed onto you like soil, Never forget hating yourself, your food, music, name, what burnt knuckle hair smelt like. Your mother dyed her hair blonde, plucked your eyebrows into slivers. Never forget the wet wrinkle in her scream when the second tower fell, that it meant something was to come. Your parents changed their names, airplanes, random security checks, being accused of trying to start a caliphate, Learning the word caliphate, the photo of Pope Shenouda, the trigger pull that followed. Never forget learning about Afghanistan, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Palestine. How you, your Persian friend, your, Af your Afghan friend, started a tagging crew called Arabs with Attitude, though none of you were Arab. White kids wanted to join. You told them they had to get jumped in. How easily abdomens give to driving knees. How pink white flesh can flush. When they first said never forget and how bad you wish they would. When your friend's dad said they need to just nuke all the fucking Arabs. How stiff his jaw looked. The terror in your father's eyes when he saw you wearing a shirt that said diamond in Arabic. How he calls you every time there's a mass shooter how he begs you to shave your face, how 14 people were killed near your house in San Bernardino. He begs you to shave your face. Never forget when your father told us that we deserve this. We changed the way the world travels. No other people have done this before. We have nothing to be proud of. Um, this is them, uh, Arabic for blood. There were soldiers outside of the monastery in Old Cairo the day after Christmas. Barricades, metal detectors, AK-47s at hand with an extra clip taped or zip tied upside down so they can reload faster when the militants come. Tattoos of Coptic crosses on the right wrists are the only way to tell it's apart. My bare wrist made them worry as martyrdom stains faith blotched in blood, ink, names, altars, the red represents the bloodshed wool. We wrap ourselves in the fabric of our dead sheep. Militants stop buses full of cops. And that's, that's cops as in Coptic people. Uh, militants stop buses full of cops. Unload in the middle of the Sahara. Buses full of brown eyes, curly hair, just like theirs. Melon balled raw. Militants drive off empty shells and empty eyes peppered across strands of sand. We wear martyrdom like perfume. Children carry the names like petrol sticking to skin, like extra clips taped or zip tied upside down. Um, this is England. Dear England, I told a Saidi joke at my grandfather's eulogy. Imagine that. A room full of Egyptians mourning and laughing in English, speaking your spill, motor oil silting. We hear you in every word, England strung out in the room, gripping a map of Africa with one hand and a butter knife in the other, scraping names and blotting lines. Gidu told me an English soldier killed his father after the occupation. Two generations later, we are in this room, jowls marred by that same bullet. Your language always held like heavy rocks in Gidu's mouth, wilted his words into flaps of themselves. He would call me Choaga, laugh at my weak tongue, and I think of shells splitting cobras, my family from the mouth. Um, America, I was 17 and blacked out, relieving myself on a tree, and you tackled me, it was poetic, the red and blue lights flashing with the warmth of urine on my leg, while your knee drove into my spine. I was American for the first time, I was yours. Um, and then I'll read one last one. 
uh, if that's okay. Um, this is called Khanzir, which means pigs. The only Coptic neighborhood in Cairo is located on the city's dump, Zebelin, which translates to garbage people. My grandfather left Hetalea before the, before the soil staled and the governor of Cairo decreed the pigs unclean, sending the pig farmers to live and work on the dump. The Coptic Falahin became Zebelin. Yet I'm afraid to order something without bacon in front of white people, as someone will always say, oh, because you're Muslim, right? I won't always correct them, because some white people just need a Muslim friend. Yet the fear of scorpions and snakes would keep my grandmother's eyes unlatched. She would lock onto her children like an ostrich watching her eggs. Yet adolescent pigeons are killed just before flight so that their bones are tender enough to chew. Yet I feel stripped when my blunt wraps come crisp like shrimp skin. Yet my father bought a golden necklace after 9-11. He said, when white people see my cross, they won't think I'm a terrorist. Yet the pig is depicted in different hieroglyphs, licking the faces of pharaohs locked in limestone forever. Yet I heard a Coptic man applaud the Muslim ban, holding on to trauma soaked from minya. Yet adolescent bones crushed with concession. Yet sleep is a privilege. Yet bacon ruins the taste of everything. And I'll eat it anyways. Yet we laugh, dad, the type of white people that will attack you aren't the type to notice the cross around your neck. Yet Cairo's dump is located on a Coptic church. Yet Morsi killed all the pigs in Egypt. The only meat most cops can afford. Yet I hate when my blunts burn too fast. Yet my father remembers watching three houses burn and six men die for their faith one night in Petaleya. Yet the Crusades was a race war in Egypt. Yet we prayed that the Vegas, yet we prayed that the Vegas shooter didn't look like us. Yet God doesn't die. Yet I sleep. Yet snakes and scorpions chiseled my grandmother's focus to a string. Thank you.